When you think of a smartphone, two brands come to mind, either Apple or Samsung. These two tech giants have dominated the smartphone industry for several years. Apple's iPhone and Samsung's Galaxy phones are household brands known by anyone who uses a smartphone. But now, the game has changed. China has turned the tables around. In the past, Chinese smartphone brands like Huawei, Xiaomi, and OnePlus were mostly for the budget conscious. These phones weren't as powerful as others, and their specs weren't too impressive either. Now, these brands are going head-to-head -head with the world's smartphone giants. In fact, they've captured around 40% of the global smartphone market share. How did Chinese smartphone makers make the leap? What are their goals? Let's find out more. Made in China 2025 Before we look into the major Chinese smartphone brands, let's explore what they're trying to achieve. Chinese President Xi Jinping has an ambitious plan called Made in China 2025. Here, China seeks to eventually overtake the United States as the global leader in top technology sectors, including semiconductors, artificial intelligence, robotics, smartphones, and electric vehicles. This plan also sparked the trade war between the U.S. and China during the time of President Donald Trump. The U.S. government didn't want China to gain the upper hand, so it enacted a lot of restrictions on Chinese manufacturers. It cost both countries billions of dollars. China, though, is persistent in its push to create export-quality high-tech products. The country is making a lot of effort to push away from low-value commodity manufacturing and into more advanced industries. Flooding the market with competitive smartphones is one of their ways of achieving this goal. Now, let's see what these major Chinese smartphone makers have to offer. Huawei. For most people who are into tech, Huawei needs no introduction. It's the world's second largest smartphone company, and it also manufactures hardware for cell towers and other communications equipment. Huawei is also at the forefront of the US-China trade war and the two nations' battle for tech dominance. In the U.S., most people hadn't even heard of Huawei until it became controversial. It consistently made headlines around the world, especially when the U.S. Commerce Department required U.S. companies to secure a special license first before they could do business with Huawei. As a result of this ban, Huawei lost access to U.S.-made semiconductors. Also, the company lost its ties with Google, which runs most of the software on the popular Android operating system. As a consequence, any apps that depended on Google services to work, like Uber and eBay, wouldn't properly work on Huawei devices. Google-owned apps like Maps and YouTube were out of the question as well. To address this problem, Huawei took matters into their own hands. The company created its own app store called Huawei App Gallery. There, users could find alternatives to apps that wouldn't work without Google services. That move allowed Huawei to launch more premium smartphones like the Mate 30. At launch, this was the company's first flagship phone that didn't come with Google Apps. Eventually, Huawei launched and sold even more premium phones, growing their earnings to about $65 billion in 2020. Xiaomi Xiaomi is a more recent company. It was established only in 2010, and it has quickly become one of the world's leaders in smartphones. As of 2019, more than 124 million Xiaomi phones have been shipped to over 90 countries. The secret to Xiaomi's success is selling phones with good specs for a fraction of the price of the more popular brands. Xiaomi phones offer excellent alternatives to popular flagship phones, especially for people with tight budgets. That's the market Xiaomi initially targeted, making it popular in countries like India. In fact, Xiaomi phones in India sell out within hours of their release. The company has even created a phone that costs only $100. Though most of Xiaomi's income is generated from smartphone sales, the company also sells software and services used by its phones. This allows the company to price its phones lower. 
In addition, Xiaomi has a wide range of other smart devices like electric scooters, robot vacuum cleaners, dishwashers, and air purifiers. These products have helped put its MI brand in the international marketplace. In recent years, though, Xiaomi has doubled down on selling premium phones over the cheaper ones. The strategy has worked well for the company, letting them grow their revenues by 14% in the first quarter of 2020. In contrast, smartphone giants Apple and Samsung slated that the year ahead will be quite challenging. Oppo and Vivo These two are related companies, Oppo being the older and larger sibling. In the US, Oppo and Vivo really aren't that well known, but they have managed to climb to within the top six smartphone manufacturers in the world. Vivo phones did make a few cameos in the movie Captain America Civil War. Also, the company has even clinched an endorsement deal with NBA legend Stephen Curry. This is their exact strategy. High profile product placements and sponsorships to capture the Western market. Vivo, like Xiaomi, also makes more affordable phones with specs comparable to more expensive brands. The popularity of these phones with young adults springboarded the company to fame and fortune. Both Oppo and Vivo have also gained larger market shares amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. This is in large part thanks to their strong presence in Asia, particularly in China and India, which are the world's two largest smartphone markets. Both Oppo and Vivo say that they are competitors to one another. However, both companies actually grew out from the same parent company, which is BBK Electronics. OnePlus OnePlus has made its presence known in the U.S. market much earlier than other Chinese smartphone makers. The company managed to break into the U.S. smartphone market within just seven years since it was established. OnePlus is based in Shenzhen, which is known as the tech center of China. It started out as an online-only seller of affordable, high-end phones. In 2018, OnePlus stood on the shoulder of a U.S. telecom giant, T-Mobile. This was the first ever partnership OnePlus had with an American telco. It propelled OnePlus to great success, as many Americans opt to get their phones through contracts with mobile carriers. Also, that meant that OnePlus phones would be available in every T-Mobile store in the United States. The strong partnership was marked by the release of the OnePlus 6T series of flagship phones. As of last year, OnePlus remains as one of the fastest growing smartphone manufacturers in the US. Last April, the company even launched another flagship series, the OnePlus 8, in the middle of a pandemic. The OnePlus 8 is backed by Verizon, another popular US mobile carrier. Lenovo. Lenovo is mostly known for its laptops and desktops, but aside from computers, Lenovo also owns one of the world's most well-respected phone brands, Motorola, which it acquired from Google last 2015. Though the company suffered years of losses, Lenovo's mobile division managed to turn the tables in 2019. Then in 2020, Lenovo launched a range of phones in different price ranges under the Motorola brand, including the revamped Razer phones. Lenovo is also developing gaming class phones under its Legion brand, which is also well known in the domain of gaming laptops. Realme Realme is a very recent company founded in 2018 by a former executive of Oppo. In a similar way, Realme produced cheaper phones which have beefed up specs and that's how they succeeded. In 2019, parent company BBK Electronics reported that Realme shipped 25 million phones. Last 2020, the company released its first ever 5G-capable phone, which pushed it into the premium smartphone market. TCL TCL is best known for making televisions, but it actually makes phones as well. In the past, TCL made phones for different brands like Alcatel, Blackberry, and Palm. But in April of 2020, TCL released the 10 series, which has decent specs and included a model with 5G capability. Aside from that, TCL has plans to be the next big thing in foldable phones. They already have concepts for a tri-fold phone and a rollable phone. 
Chinese smartphone brands have certainly gone a long way from the reputation of being cheap and unreliable. Now, the tide has shifted, granting Chinese brands more dominance in the international smartphone market. They can only perform better in the future, especially as the current Biden administration has relaxed the trade restrictions for Chinese companies. Pretty soon, they may even overtake Apple and Samsung as world-leading smartphone makers.